sliding whip, sliding six. They wanna slide in DMs. Pricks them boy, their pants can't win. Cool. Um, we've got so many people. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna make it an all-inclusive chat and direct questions to everybody um, at different times. But before we do that, do you have mics or am I passing them out? Okay, so first of all, if we just start from this corner and if you just introduce yourself and just keep it brief. Uh, what's up guys, I'm Kirk. I'm Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, tell them a bit about what you do, but not too much, because we'll get into that later. Um, I direct music videos, I've done a lot of stuff with um, most of the UK scene. I've done Mabel, Notes, a lot of boys, Kojo. I do all of the Daily Duppies. Um, yeah, I've done, done quite a bit of stuff. Give him a clap, give him a clap. <laughs> give him a clap. <laughs> hey everyone, um, I'm Ashley Jade, I'm the director. Um, I've worked with a range of artists, as well as doing like music videos. I do like commercials and stuff. I've done some stuff for H and M. Um, I just done something with Comedy Central. So I'm a bit all over the place, as well as music. Hey everyone, I am Kevin Hudson. I'm a director as well. Um, predominantly do music videos. I've done a bit of everything in my time as a director, but music videos is my focus. I worked with a few artists, Chip, Rich, um, Bugsy Malone, a whole range of artists, so yeah. Cool. Yo, oh, okay. Hi guys, uh, my name is Tommy, but um, people call me Mr. MTMMG, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, I'm a music video director, predominantly as well. Uh, worked with a couple of artists, can some UK, some international. Um, your Wiz, your Jacquees, Mr. Easy's, um, yeah, just a bunch of names, man. Just a couple of artists here and there, but yeah, that's me. Hi guys, my name's Teasy. I'm 23. I'm a director. Um, I came up with like MM. I've shot a lot of oh, every single one of the Mad About Bars. I've shot D Block Europe, um, Honcho, Young Dolph, Rich the Kid. A lot of people still. Everyone just say wow. No one's going to say wow with me. <laughs> wow. It's just me that's wowing. Like, I think it's because I'm sitting up here with them. I just feel so, I kind of feel small. <laughs> but um, again, this one's going to be kind of for everyone because I want everyone to get to know you. Um, on a personal level, just a little bit, um, if we start from this side now, I know you just spoke. Um, if we just go around and say kind of what inspired you or what, what examples of work might have ex inspired you to do what you do? For me, for me personally, it was like, I started off doing graphic design and I was doing that for like a year. And I kind of found like I was not really engaged enough with the artist. I felt like I was behind the screen. I never really felt like I was involved in the process. So I just borrowed the camera and then just started shooting. And I'm kind of here. Any examples of work, or was it just... Um, did I it did, like, Jay Huss, Lean and Bop, the original artwork. I did some stuff for Young Bane. Um, I've done quite a few things. It's all on a different company name. But that was, like, my past life. <laughs> so, yeah. Just upgraded now. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well done. Um. Um, for me, uh, I think my thing's a bit different because I didn't come into this um, thing as, like, a self-shooter, which I think, like, most people did, and... Um, I kind of came in filming like a lot of BTS for artists and um, stuff and then I guess when opportunity met preparation that's kind of when I got the chance to shoot my first like music video because I'm originally like into film and stuff in it but then kind of stumbled into music videos and then just kind of been in it for about a year now and then just been yeah just been working at it so yeah a year that well done by Thank the way, for everything you've done. Um. Yeah, so with me, I kind of started in a graphic design kind of field as well. Um, doing artwork, uh, 3D motion design as well. I used to do a lot of stuff on a program called Cinema 4D. And I used to make 3D intros for a lot of YouTubers. And even, I don't know if any of you remember Rap City. 
so yeah, I made the three D intro, and that was kind of my first thing that I did, and I thought, yeah, I can take this seriously. I'll do that. But again, I didn't feel like it was something that I was engaged with the people as much. So I bought a camera. Um, a friend of mine wanted to shoot a music video. I shot his first music video. And then after that, I went on to shoot his friend and then his friend and his friend. And it just kind of snowballed after that. So that's how I kind of got into it and just grown from there. Okay, so my journey's been literally everything you can imagine so i started out by doing photography well first of all at gcse um i did media and i remember seeing um rashid from link up he did like this animation where he put himself in the good life video so i was like damn how do you do that i want to do that reached out to him i thought it was like yeah i want to shoot music videos he took me to like a video it was like i don't even know it was in halsden some run down half estate i was like mm, actually no i don't think i want to do this so then I was like, cool. Anyways, carried on with like education. Went to college, did a BTEC in media, found photography. Um, those times I was 17 and I was working in Primark and there was a photographer that worked on my till. So I just harassed him. Oh, let me come on set, let me come on set, let me just assist you. So then he finally let me come on set, did BTS. Um, that was for Retro 2 Superhero, a really old, old song. Um, and then from there, it was just like every day going to a different shoot, different shoot. So I did a lot of photography. Then from photography, I got a Canon, taught myself how to self-shoot. Started shooting freestyles, music videos. Then I got into production. Again, harassing a director. Oh, can I assist you? Got into production. And then from production, I got into directing. And then, yeah, I'm here now. I started, I didn't really like know what I wanted when I started. I just got a camera, a Ronin, and I just started shooting, like just hitting bare artists on Twitter. S 650 artists I hit on Twitter. I got like 15 replies <laughs> and one video. And um, that video never came out because it was so bad. But from there, I just started like doing, like hitting up other people, networking, and it just kind of grew bigger and bigger. Like I didn't know about the whole production side of things. I didn't know like I'd be like having, like, I didn't know about Aries and Reds. So I just, it was just me and my Canon, and uh, yeah, just just did that as much as I could until it kind of just brought me to where I am now. Cool. Um, are we getting to know them a little bit more? Are we breaking the ice? Yeah, ish. Um, when she spoke about Rashid, I just remembered something. Um, part of the reason why I actually started doing this was because I think when I was about say sixteen or seventeen, I saw a video on Link Up TV, right? And prior to that video, it was like, I always used to think, because I wasn't in that kind of like world or industry, I always used to think that the cameras that they were using were like beyond reach or whatever. And I'm saying like, it was just, it just seemed like it wasn't, that was like a different world, didn't it? And then I think there was one of like these freestyles. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, it was, they were shooting. And then normally they do this thing. I don't know if like people know, but when someone's shooting the main artist and then you've got someone shooting, that person shooting. So it's like, you could kind of see the camera that they were using and then I saw it and obviously back then man used to go through like the Argus catalog bearing it looking at things that man can't really get in it but yeah so I, there was a camera that it looked like I was like Rola I've seen this before so I was just like da, da, da. well she wasn't exact same one but like the same like body or whatever in it so and then from there I was just like oh like this is it's not as unattainable as I thought it was do you know what I'm saying because obviously what we're talking 2000 and 10, 2011, like, Link Up TV were, you know what I'm saying, they still are, but, like, at that point, like, they were, like, do you know what I mean? So, it seemed unreachable, but obviously, like, seeing that kind of, like, motivated me to actually take the step to buy the camera, which I bought on, like, a, August used to do, like, this six-month thing, where you buy and then pay in six months and stuff, and then from there, that's how I got my first camera. And yeah. I mean, you have to start somewhere. Of course. You definitely have to start somewhere. So, my next question is... Um, and it's kind of a everybody question as well. But is there a piece of work or a certain video that totally defined your career? Or when was it that you felt like, you know what, I put this out, this did amazing, I'm getting great feedback, my career begins now? So for me, it was like, I've been doing like a lot of little videos here and there, and I started working with GRM. 
and they hit me up and was like, yo, we've got this guy, it's, it's a song about Addison Lee's, do you want to do it? And I was like, all right, cool, the song's a banger. I linked up with Notes, we started talking about it. He'd done the video that day, I gave it back to them the next day. We released the trailer on like the Wednesday, and by the Sunday, like, I was booked up like two months in advance. I'd gone from like begging people like, yo, can I do your video? Please, can I do your video? To people like calling my, like, my phone like, yo, please, can you do my video? Like, I was like, now they this is know. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Th <laughs> so for me, that was like a, like a defining point in my life. Addison Lee. Yeah, Addison Lee, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say mine was this year. So um, I won a treatment to go shoot in Chicago. I'd gone there, shot this, and then my DOP um, told me that he was going to LA to shoot some rapper called Roddy Rich, and I was just like, wait, what? What do you mean, some rapper, Roddy Rich? I love Roddy. <laughs> so he was like, oh, come, you can co-direct. I was just like, hell yeah. So then I went to LA and then um, got to co-direct on the the plug featuring Roddy, Chip, and Young Bane, and I didn't tell anyone, didn't tell no one. I think only like a couple people knew I was like, yeah, no, nah, everyone's going to find out when it drops. And then when it drops, oh, God. <laughs> like, literally, people didn't stop hitting me up. It was mad. And then, yeah, you just been... Shine yeah. love. Uh, for me, it was probably two videos. I'd say the first one was Baseman and Shot Town, New Waving. That video kind of defined me as kind of Kevin Hudson. Like everybody knew who I was after that. Before that, I'd been shooting for about two, three years, and weren't really getting anywhere. I was just doing it out of the love. I weren't really getting paid. But after that, I could start charging. I was able to say, yep, give me a 50 pounds. So yeah, that video, which allowed me to get paid. And then after that, um, when I first joined Link Up, because I was working with Link Up for a while, it was Wretch and Avelino, Hulk Hogan. That video, again, kind of put me out there to the masses to say, yep, this is Kevin Hudson and this is what you can do now. So, yeah, those two videos kind of allowed me to get paid and then make a brand for myself. <coughs> um, I think for me as well, I think it was two videos f uh, for two different reasons. First one was um, Jaquiz. Uh, I shot a video for him off of the album. That's not the one that just come out, the one before that. Um, and the way that happened, everything within that video happened within the space of like, I'd say 72 hours for me, finding out I was gonna shoot the video, shooting the video and all of that stuff there. So I think that happening, and that was my, that was my first video. So that was my, my first like proper music video. Like obviously like Kirk said, like prior to that, I, ain't, I didn't really have no knowledge of like your Aries and your Reds and stuff. So it was a lot of like learning on the, on the, on the day or like, do you know what I mean, prior. Um, so for that, I guess for that like sentimental purpose, I'd say that video. Um, and then the second one that actually kind of put me out there was uh, Pumpy. So I shot a video called Pumpy um, with uh, Cadet, um, Swams, Dino, um, all of them. So, um, and then when that was like my first like UK video to come out and then when that kind of came out, that kind of opened doors to, to a lot of other things. So yeah. Uh, for me personally, I felt like, <coughs> obviously before I was TZ, I had a company called Frankincense and Myrrh. So all of my existing work that I did on under that name, I feel like is kind of separate. But when I was under working under that name, there was someone called Shoki who I was working with, and he had a song called Quatrix. And I felt like after that song, people started to take me in, not on a massive level, but I was like, right, there's a bit of a buzz there. Every time I drop a video, I always check the YouTube comments to see what people are saying. And on that one, like, there was bare comments about, oh, yeah, videos look sick. Who shot this? Blah, blah, blah. But in terms of, like, a video that I feel like is taking me to a new level, I don't think I've really had that yet. I've had big videos, but I still feel like I'm getting slept on, if I'm being honest. Which you shouldn't be. Um, he mentioned Shoki, and just, uh, just as a, I guess, a little nugget for everyone that's here in terms of... Um, timing just to kind of know like everything happens in timing like uh, he probably doesn't know but i shot a video for shoki right and the video came out terrible like the video was appalling like it was it was dead in it um and then obviously they um do you remember jay and kenny mm. kenny and them lot so they were actually seen the video that i've shot for shoki right and obviously at that point i had no idea what i was doing because i think i'm thinking i right, cool if the camera's moving mad fast in the video 
you have to move mad fast. Like you have to move the, you have to shake the camera. So that's what I'm doing. I'm 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 filming my man and I'm shaking the camera. I'm thinking, this this is what's meant to happen. But obviously that didn't happen and that never came out and whatever in it. But I think obviously just as a quick message to everyone, like at that point, obviously I felt like I felt like oh like this isn't like I don't know what I'm doing. Like it was very it was a very confusing time. Which I'm saying so, um, just a little like quick nugget, I guess like. Everything is in time. Everything happens in time. Even though obviously that didn't pattern then, don't mean that you can't like learn and grow and X, Y, and Z and obviously pattern later. So, yeah, man. Cool. Thanks for sharing that, by the way. Um, I hope you lot took that in. Ashley, I want to ask you as a director, how much creative control do you have and what do you do with that creative control? Um, I feel like I have... Mm, Lately, I've had a lot of mo a lot more creative control. So um, recently, I did a video with M Honcho and Nate Smalls called Fun. Um, with that one, you know, I, sp I had I actually met Honcho in LA, funny enough, on the Roddy shoot, um, and you know, he said that all he said that he knows that he wants to jump in the in a swimming pool. So I was like, okay, cool. And then when I'd gone to LA this year, I was watching Goodfellas and I saw the one take, I was like, damn, that's so sick. I need to recreate it one day. So I just put it in the back of my head. I was like, cool, I'm gonna keep that. So then I just presented it to him. I, was, uh, I said to him, oh, have you seen Goodfellas? He was like, yeah. So then I just literally exported his track with the scene from Goodfellas. And I said, I think we should do this and keep this as a theme. Um, and he loved it, and then I just had to put it in a treatment and just send it over. So with that one, I had a lot of control, whereas with other shoots, it's a little bit less, because um, there's so many other opinions, and there's so many, you know, you're, you're not just shooting an artist, you're, you're, you've got to make sure it fits their brand. Um, I remember when I first did one of my videos, and I had this whole idea, I was like, yeah, it's going to be like paid in full, like e each one's going to be a character, and the label just shut every single thing down. I was like, yeah, this one, he's gonna be like, in like a strip club kind of vibe. They was like, no, we can't have him disrespecting women. I was just like, he's not. It's just like, there's gonna be a couple girls yeah, around. Cool. Then I was like, this one's gonna be the money man. No, we can't have him smoking and counting money. I was like, bro, what? Like, but you lot said you wanted paid in full. So them times, I think what happens is when you, when you start to, kind of have more of a, p um, a portfolio, people start to trust you more. But it always helps to have a relationship with the artist because then you can you know, discuss with them what they would like. And if you've got them backing you, ultimately that that's who you have to go with, the artist. So yeah, depends. Cool, and I just wanna um, open it up to the rest of the panel because it might be different, it might creative control might look different for you guys, but I just want to hear. I'd say like most of the time, like you get hit up with a brief and you kind of have to work around that brief. So like you do have creative control to some aspects, but then you still have to follow like a, made gu like a main guideline. And normally it's cool anyway. Like if you've got a good relationship with the artist, you can hit the artist up like, yo bro, like I know you was thinking this, but I kind of thought about this. And sometimes they'll just be like, yeah, you know what? That sounds good. Let's just go with it. So I think like, Dap said it once as well. It's like you got to be very much like a, a people person. Mm. It's like you got directing, you got to be creative, but it's very much communicating with people, seeing how they feel about things, and just working with people. And that's how you get your best videos, to be honest. And um, what is that like to have such a great idea in your mind and take it to a label? Or perhaps the artist isn't just feel isn't feeling it. What does what's that like? Can you fight your case? Because I probably would want to. I, I was going to say, uh, for me, it's like, I don't really get upset by those things. I just was like, as long as whatever idea the artist picks is like good and the video is good in the end, that's the main thing. But I, I say like, don't, like obviously try and fight your case, but don't like burn bridges over it. Don't be like, oh, you guys like have no idea what you're doing. Because <laughs> like if people don't like you, you won't get hired anyway. So just uh, try and be supportive and stuff. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, one thing that I had to remember is that you're providing a service and, you know, the artist or the label are actually commissioning you to bring something to life. So really and truly, like, you can put your idea across, but they're paying you to deliver something. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to separate the creative and, you know, focus that this is business, like, not get too emotional about it. And 
worst thing that can happen. They don't like the idea. You save it. Do you know what I mean? There's been plenty of like, you know, the paid in full one, it came in full circle because I ended up doing the paid in full reference with the artist just on a different track and it was just a bit different. So, yeah, just remember it's business, you know. Um, I think for me, um, I think because everything for me happened in such a short space of time um, in terms of like a music video um, journey, uh, when it f when I first got in contact with like, labels and stuff, it was very like touch and go. It was very touchy for me because if I pitched, because a lot of the, like, before I spoke to the labels, a lot of the videos that I did kind of was like a go straight away. Mm -hmm. So it was just like when I got my first like no yeah. from a label because they decided to go for another treatment. Obviously at that point I didn't know what pitching was. I didn't know what, I mean, getting commissioned was. So I pitched this idea telling, I've already started like I've already hit my producer, I've already started producing it or whatever and X, Y, and Z, and then to find out that, oh, like, it's not happening because there's a process that you've got to pitch it, they've got to like it and stuff. So um, it was a very, like, it, it was, at, at, that, at, that, at the beginning, it kind of used to get me upset, but I think, like she said, it's you're providing a service and also you can save that idea, do you know what I'm saying? And you can, you as when you have time to sit on an idea, you can always pick it apart. I'm saying take it out. This makes sense, actually. Now, if we, if we, if I was to do this, this would work X, Y, and Z. So, I think yeah, that's like I prefer I prefer to speak with artists, but also with label shoots as well. They, they don't. Cool. Um, now, yesterday I think it was we had a little discussion amongst ourselves. Um, some of the mixtape madness team, we had a little discussion amongst ourselves because I just put out there that Triller, the app, seems to be um, like the new way to market your music. And what also stuck out to me is that it's all visual now. So how important is the visual for the song? What's the objective when you're approaching a music video? Um, personally, I think that visuals are everything, but I feel like, especially in the UK, people kind of overlook it. That's why we get loads of videos that look very the same, the same, very safe. But um, one example that I always give is like, you know, obviously this year we lost Nipsey Hussle. Now all we have of him is what he's left on YouTube and that's it. So it's like, I feel like people need to think more long term and about their legacy. Like how do they want to be seen like because Gary V always says you know document because your great grandchildren are going to see this and it's like mm, sometimes when you look back we're going to see the same of this a lot of the same stuff so yeah I feel like content is everything legacy um, for me I think the mu the visual aspect of a song is like is one of the most important things when when trying to put something out, do you know what I'm saying? Or just a visual aspect of anything to like, because you're bringing something to life. So for example, I think for me, um, I shot a video not too long ago, uh, two out of 10. Um, and that whole process was me actually pitching. So I'd listened to the song, right? The song's come out and um, I've listened to the song and I've had an idea and I've written the treatment. I've, I haven't been asked to do it, do you know what I'm saying? It's just cause I thought, okay, cool, do you know what? This would make sense with this. And then I've kind of found a way to get it to Tion and yeah. Demlock, you know what I'm saying? Because um, I'd shot a video for Asim previously, so I kind of sent it to him. I was like, oh, if Tion's interested in shooting this, like, I'd be like, I'd be down to do it. And then obviously we shot it, brought the idea to life, and you know what I'm saying? It's out in the world. So it's just like, I think the visual aspect to it is is so important. And like she said, obviously, it's, it's about legacy. But again, on the flip side, in the UK, a lot of like artists, because be before coming into the industry, you you'd watch visuals and think, oh right, like why does mo why do most things look the same? Or and you'd think, oh, you're blaming like the directors or the videographers or the camera or the editors. But you, what a lot of people don't realize is it's the artists. More more time anyway, it's the artists that kind of want it like that because they fi they see X Y and Z video and they see how much numbers it's done and they think, oh yeah, cool, this is the formula. So I want my video to look like that. And the moment you're trying to kind of think or add any sort of like difference or creativity to it, they kind of get scared of it because they think, oh, it might not work and, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of where it stems from. Um, but yeah, like she said, no, and the legacy and just like putting stuff out there like you want to be known for, you know what I'm saying? You want to be, or you want to be uh, remembered for in terms of visually. I think even, yeah, in terms of where we are and in terms of a market right now, 
Um, it's mad saturated. Like everyone literally raps. If I go on my Instagram, there's so many people trying to promote their videos on these pages. And it's like, if your videos are dead, I'm probably not going to listen to you. Even if you're hard, I might not listen to you. But if you have a good video and you keep me around for 10, 20, 30 seconds, I might stick around long enough to take in the song. And I feel like people overlook that. Everyone wants to shoot like an apartment video or yeah, let's get a couple of models. But I feel like that stuff's there. We've all seen it before. So I think what, at least for me personally, what I'm going forward now is paying like proper attention to detail on mm. what my videos are and trying to make each one feel bespoke. And, and what would make a good video if you could put some things out? I feel like you have to take the song, listen to it, fully take it in and embody what the song means and what it represents in the visual itself. And I feel like when an artist says something, if you can relate what they're saying to what you're seeing on screen, those are the most powerful kind of shots because it really makes you feel what the artist is saying. I want to talk... Oh, go ahead. I was going to add to that. Um, Video-wise, it's for me, or not all the time, rewatch factor. So getting the audience to rewatch it again and again. And with that, it could be a strong story. It could be a funny dance move because we all know now we're living in a time where like five seconds of a three minute video could make the whole video because it ends up on Instagram and it becomes a, a meme, meme. <laughs> and the song takes off. So it's rewatch factor, whether it's that five seconds or the 30 seconds or the entire video. Like for example, with NSG and me shooting their videos, they're always on to me to make sure I get the dance moves in. I, may, I might not, um, I might be chopping it too much, for example, and they say, nah, slow that down just to show the dance moves. And that's where they kind of, I feel, have grown and their dances have become a thing for their brand. Cool, so I was gonna ask, um, sometimes when we watch music videos and we've listened to the audio, it doesn't make sense, <laughs> they don't match. So what's gone on there? Like, can anyone tell me, like, what's going on when we're watching a music video and it's just like, this doesn't make any sense, doesn't yeah. go with the music? I feel like a lot of people like to rush. We're in an industry where everything is, oh, yeah, video has to come out next week. And when you're putting deadlines ahead of creativity, you're obviously going to have a compromise at some point. And I feel like where that's the case, people are just shooting whatever they have access to. Because, for example, when it comes to organising a location, as we can all agree, everyone, all directors care about what location we shoot on. But sometimes the location you want isn't always available or you have to compromise on certain levels. And some people compromise so much so that the, co the quality of the vid itself is compromised. And I think that's why you've got to draw a line. I think on the flip, on the flip, I definitely agree with everything that he said on it. But I think on the flip side as well, um, not to do with obviously with the things making sense, but in terms of like the pressure of turning things over, I think that's, that's kind of like, it's, it's good and bad sometimes because... I've had videos where it's just like, I've had to turn over in, in about two days. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, sometimes I, I like, I, it's, it's good pressure to like, okay, cool. We've got to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Obviously, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't like, if, if you're not a, a person that's good under pressure, I wouldn't advise it because it's very strenuous in it. But like, in general, anyway, I think that to, sometimes it's needed to like, kind of keep you on your toes. And But again, it's, you've got to do it in such a way because a lot of things could look rushed, do you know what I'm saying? And the end product, no one's gonna care that this person was dinging off your line asking you where's my video, this person was saying we need to shoot tomorrow. Everyone only cares about the end product, like you said, obviously with things making sense and so on. So no one in the audience is gonna, well, very few people are gonna go into detail of finding out the process to the video or how it was shot or how long it took and so on and so forth, do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. And, um. You touched on UK videos, and I know so many people probably feel the same way, um, that sometimes some of our visuals can look the same. Um, how, imp first of all, this is not just a question for you, by the way. First of all, how do you sometimes put it across to the artist that, hey, you probably, you probably don't want to do that again. Um, sometimes I just don't bring it up to the artist and I just do my own thing. <laughs> and then I just deliver it and they're like, oh, that looks sick. So that's like, for example, with Ambush, I did the Ambush video of Miss Banks recently. And, um, you know, all they <laughs> the only brief was party, 
Girl Shaking Ass and Kuzumba. Hey. So I was like, all right, cool. So I was just thinking, how can I make this look a bit different? So I knew that um, I was going to put it in the four by three aspect ratio, so make it a square. So that automatically make just gives it a little bit of a different feel. Um, the way that we lit it, uh, just made it a bit more like dark, kind of. Uh, even I love um, grain on my stuff. I love everything to look like film. So like just made sure I made it super grainy and, you know, just generally made everyone have fun with it. Because I feel like sometimes, you know, videos can look very forced. And there's small things as well, like in an edit, you know, watching the girls that are around the artist. If a girl is like looking like awkward, you cut that scene out because those are the small, small details. Um, and, you know, like the way that the edit is as well, the small little things. Edits are a big deal that can make or break your video. But, um, yeah, sometimes I don't tell the artist. I just go for it. And for everyone, I guess, what is it to be a videographer or to be a music video director and just think to yourself, I'm sort of part of the process of pushing UK music and uh, British culture in the video. Like, what does that feel like? Is that sort of a big responsibility or is it something you just take in your stride? Um. Oh. Um, for me, I think I didn't come coming into this thing, right? Um, I used to watch like Kirky's videos, I used to watch Kevin Hudson's videos, I used to watch TU's videos. And these were at the at the points I was watching them, they were self shooters, right? And um prior to me coming into this thing, it, it always everything that you see on screen or whatever always looks easier than it is, do you know what I'm saying? Because you think, oh yeah, shit, I can do that. I just need to press a button, you know what I'm saying? Um, but being in it and obviously not going the self-shooter route, it's kind of like giving me a lot more respect for self-shooters and anyone here that is a self-shooter. Because like, that's a whole different... One second. Go on. Do you guys know what a self-shooter is? Cause does anyone not know what a self-shooter is? Yeah, me neither. So, uh, <laughs> no, so, so you would have put uh, that out there. From my from my knowledge, in it, I think a self shooter is someone that shoots like th they cover the everything of a music video, like in terms of they've got the camera, the are in. They just they, they look for lower budget video. So like I'd say anything from like five hundred to like thousand five, in terms of a uh, budget for a video. So it's like it's normally in c like a self shooter. I don't know. Yeah, you like you don't have a team. It's just you by yourself. You're editing. You're doing it everything by yourself. It's just like videography. Yeah. Whereas when you're a director, you have a whole team behind you. You've got people, someone's on the camera, someone's on the edit, someone's doing lights. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like I was saying, like I, the respect going, it, being into this, because I tried the self-shooting thing and it, it didn't, it wasn't really like, do you know what I mean? Because it's kind of knowing about strengths and weaknesses, do you know what I'm saying? And so seeing self-shooters do everything, like you said, and bring the ideas to life in such a creative way, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's not really spoken about a lot, do you know what I'm saying? Because it's it's different to directing. Obviously, directing has got its own yeah, perks and stuff in it, but I think as a self-shooter, man, it's, it's... But I don't think anyone should ever stay in that for too long. That's another thing as well. I don't think anyone should ever stay in self-shooting for too long. Try and get into get into a team, because when, you, when you're in a team, when you're with people, you can bounce ideas off each other. If you're just in there by yourself, that's how you get kind of like boxed in into this whole like apartment thing and this whole let me get a car in and yeah. X, Y, and Z. Do you know what I'm saying? So try as much as possible to to delegate. But obviously, yeah. So is it safe to say that you do actually feel a responsibility as a videographer when it comes to pushing like when it comes to pushing UK culture, pushing British culture, do you feel like you have a responsibility? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, in, 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 like he's, I think he said something about obviously him being slept on in terms of um, the videos that he does. Um, and I actually do agree because the type of videos that he does are very like, you can, you can kind of tell like a TV, like a, do you know I mean, a TV video when you see it, which is I think is a good, that's because you can kind of know, okay, cool, this is, this is the this is the quality that you're getting in X Y and Z, isn't it? But I think for me, I haven't I haven't 
like I don't think a video that I've done has hit the culture. Like for example, with Kevin's done, he's done options and um, OT box, right? Yeah. So those those two videos have impacted the culture. Do you know what I'm saying? So in a sense, like we are responsible for. Do you know what I'm saying? For she did um, the Roddy Rich and Bane, and that's like a link up of yeah. the UK and the US. Do you know what I'm saying? That's something that's impacted the culture. Kirk did Addison Lee, do you know what I'm saying? So it's something that like we are in a sense, we definitely there is a lot of responsibility for us to to um he did Digger D. Yeah. Um the what's the name? The No Diet. And you know what I mean that's one of the like the highest chart in drill tunes. Yeah. So it's just like it's we are definitely I feel like we're definitely, definitely responsible for pushing the culture visually. Great answer, thank you. So I was gonna say like I watch like a lot of foreign videos, like American, Australian, Spanish. And I just think like when I look at their videos and if they're really bad, I'm just like, oh, like, like that's that. Imagine how that would be if like someone from their country is looking at our videos, and I'm like, yo, I want to make the videos sick. So when people are looking on the UK scene, they're like, yo, like the UK's got sick videos. Like, I, I need to go there to do my videos. Like, I want uh, their videos to be like ours. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you got to think about it how outsiders are looking into our scene rather than how we're just looking at it ourselves. That's a good answer, and I know that we. M we're supposed to go for a break, 15 minutes, sorry guys, held you for too long. Um, we're gonna come back afterwards, so it's okay to take a break now. Oh, by a burnout, you mean like, like a drought, innit? Oh, um, I think for me, uh, I'd kind of like tie it into when, obviously, like I said, I, I, I shot my f the, f like the first music video that kind of went big in like, September last year and literally from there from then till about December it was literally back to back back to back back to back shootings and then January times it went like mad quiet do you know what I'm saying and um, again obviously you still being very new to like that whole process it was very weird to get accustomed to but I think you just kind of have to first of all one thing is definitely take time out like this whole like notion of like no sleep, I'm on my grind, whatever. All of that stuff is nonsense. Like, fam, rest. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you need rest, sleep, like, do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, yeah, cool. You might have a, a section where, like, you're, work, you're shooting back to back and stuff and things are busy and stuff. That's, that's with everyone, do you know what I mean? But it's like, take time out to nurture yourself and, and rest and so on and so forth. And I think as, as directors and as creatives, the, mo the things we work the most is our mind. Do you know what I'm saying? If it's filled up with a lot of, like, irrelevant things, it clouds the creativity. So I think just kind of like freeing up your mind and not being attached to certain things. And I think that obviously, like you said, is not like very social. Like just not being in a space where like things cloud your, like, do you know what I mean? Just being, learning to take a step back from most things. That's kind of how I say to deal with burnout. You can kind of like step out, okay, cool, and look at things from the outside looking in and kind of gauge and, okay, cool, let back and go here. I can do this in X, Y, and Z. And I think. That's kind of how I I deal with it. I think for me, I, I learned the really hard way. Like I was just shooting every day back to back. I was sleeping like four hours a night and I, I gave myself a seizure, which was like crazy. I went to the doctors. They were like, yo, you've been working too much. You need to sleep. Like take a, like literally take a break. Like, because you, you just get like, once the ball starts rolling, you're just like, yo, you just take on everything. And you just, like when you want it so much, like you just can't stop. And then after that, it was like very much like, as soon as I feel like I'm getting too stressed, it's like I just, me personally, my, my thing is I love flying out, so I'll just book a quick, like, three-day trip to Spain. Might take my edits with me, or I'll just, I'll go somewhere else. That, that's my thing. Some people might just, I don't know, go for a massage or something, but, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so I, that's, that's what I do. And I think it's also very important to set boundaries. Um, like, a lot of people in this industry will want to call you at, like, one o'clock in the morning, like, yo, bro, like, where's the edit, man? And I'm like, bro, like, you asked me three hours ago, I was sleeping, like, so it's just like, very important to just like, for me, like w once it's like 7.30, 8 p.m., unless it's like a mad important phone call or it's like a busy period, I probably won't answer my phone for work calls and I just won't answer until like 10 in the morning to just make sure that I sleep properly. Or like right now it's crazy for me, so I, I'm, I'm quite busy, but when it's just like, just back to normal, just set those boundaries for yourself and make sure you make time for your friends, family, relationships, all of that, because it's all mad important because the, the better you feel, the better your videos will be and the more productive you'll be.
Cool. So, what would MM Talks be, the director's edition? What would it be without inviting an OG um, to the panel? So, we're going to talk to the man behind Chippity Chip, um, the man that gave us the visuals to Nimes, um, Can't Blame Me. Um, so, if we have Mr. Vertex in the building, can you please come up here? And if we just <laughs> you just have to introduce yourself to the crowd because everything you said to me in the small two minutes we had was amazing. So I'm just going to let you introduce yourself to them and tell them a bit of about what you've done. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know how many people know me here, just so I know because how old I am. But um, <laughs> if you do know any of my videos, could you like just say something like, hey, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool, all right, so, no, all right, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, no, so, um, yeah, I did, my first video was Tinchy Strider, Mainstream Money. Um, I did that um, in Bo. Uh, that was my, yeah, my first video. I held the camera, I edited, I edited the video. Um, and then my next major break from that was um, Chipmunk, Who Are You? After that, I gained some, um, a bit more traction, and then I got signed to a company called uh, Davey Inc., I'm partisan, and um, that video was for uh, Chip Diddy Chip, basically. Um, after that, because I was signed to an agency, I had that support, and I, I, I mean, I don't know about all the directors that are sitting on the table, I mean, sitting on these chairs right now, but yeah, I was very fortunate. I was supported by a production company who, who took care of the business side for me, so I could focus on the creativity, you know. Um, directing was one of my skill sets, but my other skill set was um, editing. Now, obviously directing, being under a production company, I realized how important it was to, you know, be a leader. You know, you can't, you can't say you want to be the director, you want to be the cameraman, you want to be the lighting man, and, and, and get 100% results, if you get where I'm coming from. And um, the next thing is the um, attitude as well. I mean, every time I had a video, I saw that as an opportunity to make a point, you know. Um, when I say opportunity, I mean like every video I felt like it was my duty to get everybody to understand the musician more, you know. And um, some sometimes a song would come in, I was I wouldn't really connect with the song, so I'd just be like, mm. But whenever I did a I did a video that I didn't connect with the song, I couldn't, you know, go in as much as I wanted to. So um with Chip's song, Chip Diddy Chip, I could see that okay, he wanted to cross over at that point. So that was my opportunity to make a point. And yeah we made a point and again I, I don't think people were getting advances as directors at, at that time and I got an advance for my for my work so um, I mean it, it's possible do you know what I mean um, is there anything else you want to ask I mean I could go on for days because I did so many videos for people who know who I am I've done so many videos you name it you know yeah, and um, right now we've just kind of been talking about what the scene is like for directors now and the kind of shifts we're seeing now uh we're trying to get into that cinematic bag now what was it when you first came what was what was it like what were the scenes like i mean <coughs> as a music video director um the cinematic approach is a bit different because you know it's not really about you the music video director it's about the musician now see when you're going into film that's when it's about the director so the storytelling is, you need to really understand the cinema language because depending on your script is going to determine how much budget you actually get, if you get where I'm coming from. So I had to re-educate myself because I've gone down that cinematic approach now. Yeah. But music videos was my entry point to understand how to like control a team or even, uh, uh, even the alchemy in the talent. Because you know, you've got, if you've got a tray of, um, let's say you've got a tray of 60, DOPs with different styles, you can choose which style you want to work with to match a certain tone, yeah. then you could choose a different editor, then you could choose a different stylist to match a certain tone. If you just use the same people over and over and over again, yeah. you're just going to get the same look over and over and over again. So obviously you've got to match it with what, what the tone actually is. But yeah, in, in regards to the cinematic approach, it's more about collaborating with the writers 
because they're the ones that we follow in terms of directing. We follow the instructions on the script. So if you want to be in control of the narrative, then it's about educating yourself more about how to, 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 to write these scripts and you will get a stronger cinematic approach because the script is like the blueprint of the visual. Do you see what I'm coming from? That's the blueprint of the visual. So if you, you know if you've got a shit bru blueprint of a house, it don't matter how good the masons are, it don't matter how good the builders are, your, your house is going to be shit because the blueprint's shit. <laughs> do you get what I'm coming from? Yeah, that so makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so if you, if you educate yourself properly about how to do a script and, um, or hire someone who knows how to write a script properly and you can collaborate with them and get your ideas across, then you will get a better cinematic look if you get where I'm coming from. But if you're just going off the top of your head, then you're going to get those results. Because I'll be honest with you, with the scripting, it's, a, it's, it's more psychological, more philosophical than you think, you know? Um, so what you're saying then, is it fair to say that you would say it's best for directors to take a step back and go back to the drawing board and decide that if they're going to approach something differently, then they need to re-educate themselves on the different aspects that then mesh into a music video. So the writing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to mesh the two things together, then that's more like a musical, if you kind of get where I'm coming <laughs> from. But um, like, for example, I don't know, uh, a more cinematic video, like a Michael Jackson video, mm. like, you know, like Bad or something like that. That's, that's a mix between a proper cinema and music. Or if you want to go down the film film route again, you would have to sit down with people who who know how to to, to write those blueprints for you or do you collaborate think that with them. Um, do you think that the UK scene now, the consumers, do you think that that's what they want to see? Um, the cinema the more cinematic videos, especially because a lot of our videos we do say that a lot of our videos are the same and we're used to one, I guess, format of a video. Yeah. Is Are we kind of ready yeah, for no what you want to bring? Yeah, we, we're totally ready. I think, like Ashley was saying, I was standing, I was listening to you. Um, she remembers the that video because it was a cinematic video. You know, when there's a story being told, you remember it because you learn something from that story. If you just do a video and people are dancing, and performing to the camera, you're only going to have the song to keep you watching it, really. You know, So if you've got a story to attach to it, you can play a part to the story that the musician was trying to say too. So yeah, I think that's where um, music videos should be going. You know, The storytelling is a lot harder, but that's what the scene needs. And um, TZ made a great point about directors not getting the credit they're due. So I want to know, for somebody, somebody that's been in the game for years now, um, how do you feel about that? Because you've put out some legendary videos. Yeah, um, I mean, I worked, I, worked, I worked really hard, and I was even doing music part-time as well, so that kind of helped. But, um, yeah, I mean, you just got, I don't, I don't think it, I I, for me, I wasn't really paying attention to the credit. You know, I felt like I had a duty, I had a responsibility, and that was to do the other part. Do I had to do my part. The musician did their part, I got to do my part. So I was more focused on, on doing that, you know. And I had, you know, mentors around me that would tell me these things, like directors that had done way bigger videos than me, um, telling me these same things. So I was kind of guided in the right way because I was signed to this production company who had bigger directors telling me, you know, you need to do it like this, you need to do it like that. So, but I, I, I see where TZ is coming from, because, yes, I mean, it, again, it just depends on character as well. You know, uh, I'm not that type of person. You know, I'm more right. like, yeah, I just want to get the, the work done, if you get where I'm coming from. If you give me credit, that's you, fine, thank you. But <laughs> if you don't, I keep it moving. I, I did my job, do you know what I mean? And throwing it back to what you learned um, earlier in your career, um, with the label it was, with the label, yeah, yeah. what would you say are some things in terms of your, um, the way you did things as a music director, as a videographer, did it then shift after your time there? D did you learn and pick up things and then change your approach? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, organization is one of them. You know, um, 
you know, when you're working with the labels, it can be a bit s stressful because you've got so many opinions you have to consider and, you know, take on board. So it's, le it's really about having a strong team. And, and the thing is, having a strong team is just the first part. The other one is you've got to be someone that's easy to work with and, like, really listen to people's opinion because music videos, when it gets to that level, you're talking about a set of 50 people that are all kind of following your lead, if you kind of get where I'm coming from. So, so that's one thing it definitely taught me, that I had to be more on point with delegation. You know, before that, I was doing most of it myself, um, especially the editing side. So that's one thing it definitely taught me. I want to thank you so much for coming and no, speaking to you. us. Um, I want to thank everyone here for coming and speaking to us. We do have one more person I want to speak to. I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm going to have to get up and just sit on the floor. But um, if Bills is in the building, this is a MM. <laughs> Clap it up. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. So you're actually part of the Mixtape Madness team. Yeah, yeah. And can you tell, just introduce yourself again and then tell everyone a bit about what you're doing for us at Mixtape Madness. Um, yeah, obviously I'm Bills, as they said. Um, I joined about four years ago now. Um, I produce most of the content on, on the channel. That's about it. <laughs> Okay, cool. And I just want to know, um, so are you aligning with Mixtape Madness's whole vision? Is that something you take on your shoulder when you think, okay, I'm producing content for this major platform? Um, is it important to you? <laughs> I don't even know. You don't? Yeah, I guess so, isn't it? Yeah. You kind of just wing it. No, obviously, I don't know. I think it's, I see it as like our vision, isn't it? Not like cool. I'm so you're part of you're part yeah. of the team. You're part of the vision. So then, okay, cool. Let's talk about that vision. Then, when you're producing content, yeah. what's going through your mind <laughs> when you're producing the content when you're putting out the content? Um, I just gotta make it hard. Like, just gotta be good. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough because we do produce good content like this show. Um, okay, so cool. I'm going to throw it out to you guys. Um, if you want to ask literally anybody, um, TZ still involved. If you have a question for any of them, just raise your hand and you can ask it. Right at the back. How you doing, guys? You right? So um, I've got a question for the directors. I wanted to know if it's integral <coughs> to have mentorship, and specifically, like, um, directors that have been in the game older than you've seen it before to actually be successful. Or do you think you can go without any mentorship? Um, I'm going to answer it for you. Hey, um, I think it's vital just in life to have mentors, um, especially from people that are in the positions that you wish to be in. So along my journey, I've had a couple different mentors. We're still here now. I always, you know, add people to it. Um, similar to like what Birkek was saying, um, 2016, I was at a production company. And being there, I found a new mentor, the woman that ran the company. Uh, she'd been, produ she was a producer. But, you know, like she was able to give me a different, like, like just give me a different outlook on things and teach me new things. Um, and then it's always good to learn from other directors. I went on a trip this year and I was with two directors. I mean, one of them had done a Jay-Z video. So it was like to sit and hear the two of them go back to back about like all these different things. I just learned so much. So I would say it's definitely vital. Um, and especially because they will talk to you about like money and the business side, which we were discussing earlier. No one really touches on that. Like, as a freelancer, how do you buy a house? Mm. How, like, how do you do that stuff, you know? I've been on YouTube so many times trying to find freelancers that talk about this, and they don't. 
so to talk to the OGs about it, like they kind of reassure you that you'll be all right and it will work out. So yeah, cycle. Mixtape Madness, MMM Talks, big up the whole team. Been here today talking to the youth, not only the youth, there's, there's olders here as well. Just giving advice on how to get into the industry and just become something because we're at a stage now that all of this stuff is a legacy that we're building for the UK. We're at a very uh, important part in the industry that what we do now is going to be seen for the next 100 years and we're at a great stage. So yeah, just sharing that information and shedding light on it. Vertex, I'm at MM Talks, I just come to basically spread the knowledge. You know, I've been in this game for a while now, so I just came to answer some questions and just share some of the experiences I've had as a director. I've been in this music video game for 10 years plus and transitioned onto the movie, so you guys are going to see my movie real soon. So yeah man, keep it locked. Big, big up to Mixtape Madness, because they're doing a lot for the culture. I rate that, we all do, we all see. Yo, yo. Oh, well, Gwan, it's Mr. MTMMG here. Big up Mixtape Madness 10 times for having me on a panel full of legends. Bro. Kirks, Ashley J, TZ, um, Kevin Hudson and Vertex, man. It was, it was so, so inspiring to be amongst greatness, man. And thank you guys. I'm mad humble to be involved in, in those, those, those names, man. It was, it was a sick event. The crowd had dope questions. The presenter was dope, man. It was lovely, man. Mixtape Madness, man. Keep doing your thing, man. You guys are, you guys are cold. You guys are for the culture, man. Big up. What's going on guys, it's Ashley J, I just want to shout out to Mixtape Madness, thank you for having me. Sliding whips, sliding six, they want to slide in DMs. Pricks them boy, that